guys. Hi. <laughs> hey. This is the Witch's Magic Murder Mystery Podcast. And we're back together. <laughs> oh my God. I'm That's Megan. So That's amazing. Karen. Hey, guys. Hey. So we're recording. You won't know this until Friday when you see it on YouTube. If I, you know, I'm behind on the YouTube videos. Great. Thank <laughs> you for your patience. Life. Um, <laughs> Summer. COVID. Pregnancy. We're recording at my house now. Yeah. And we're facing each other. This is amazing. It's hilarious. <laughs> so we always do this 10 seconds of silence to kind of help me get a baseline silence for the sound. Yeah. And <laughs> we always struggle with it, but today was real bad because we're like staring at each other. And That's we haven't great. seen each other forever. I know. I've been on vacation. Kara got COVID. I got freaking COVID. Again. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Like, I feel like Megan has been the one that's like is sick every couple of months. And but she never tests COVID. And it's never COVID. And then I get back and like, what, a week later? Yeah. Test positive for COVID. That's weird. And it just was like the word, like sore throat for like eight days straight. Cough. Well, stuffy nose. I tested today. Yeah. Because I've had a migraine. It's gone now. Oh, yeah. But I had a migraine from like Thursday afternoon until about noon today. Mm -hmm. And I kept thinking, maybe I should test for COVID. Yeah. And then with you coming over, yeah, I was like, I should probably test just to make I'm sure. I'm immune. Yeah, you <laughs> should be by now. <laughs> Super immune. Man. Okay. One of the things that I did on my vacation when I went to St. Pete, I love this podcast, you guys. <laughs> so even though I'm on vacation, I'm still going to be... Oh, yeah. Thinking and everything yeah, about same. old crimes and yeah, whatever. Yeah, or like so, trying to visit places. Like yeah. That. Yeah. So I still, I got several episodes written and I got a bunch of ideas for stuff oh, that we man. can do. Yeah. And so don't be like, gosh, you're working on vacation because this, no, I love we this love stuff. it. Yeah. yeah. Oh my gosh, you guys. <laughs> we got, I know. Listen, I've missed you. We got an anchor voicemail. Number one. Mm. We had a bunch of anchor voicemails that I never got notifications for. So if you have sent right. us some and we've ignored them, I'm sorry. Yeah, so sorry. We're going to be talking about them, not today, but later. Yeah. But in a couple of them, um, one of you messaged us to talk about the voice that you're hearing in our recording. Oh my gosh. And we're not going to be recording in that space anymore, which makes me wonder if it will still happen. Yeah. So if that's you, first, we're recording right now at my house. If you hear a voice here don't tell me i don't want to know <laughs> nobody mentioned <laughs> i'm just gonna start whispering Ollie. things to the microphone when she's not looking <laughs> just, just me. megan's hair looks great today <laughs> this is the most megan's radio <laughs> this is the most brilliant podcast ever you guys are awesome you're doing a great job that's the ghost Keep i want haunting me <laughs> So if you hear any other sounds, don't tell us. If it's not positive, I don't want to know. We can't hear about that. <laughs> okay. Today's episode. What if it's the child talking from inside my womb. Oh, <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> I wish we were videoing that. <laughs> Just to get your reaction. <laughs> Just to see my face. <laughs> I saw it clearly this time. I'm like. <laughs> I'm like horrified and also like, oh, cute. At oh, the same wow. time, she can talk to us. <laughs> cute and terrified. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> this is a mystery. Mm -hmm. An old one. Okay. Let's say, so this is an old case. Uh huh. This is from the 20s. Okay. And I really love researching one of my favorite these. times. I know. Yeah. I feel like we both belong in that era. Absolutely. Yeah. The best outfits mm -hmm. ever. Yeah. yeah. God. But um, I like reading the old records and the old newspapers yes. articles and i especially love it when i read an old newspaper article and i find something that i didn't see anywhere else because a lot of the time you know when you're researching these true crime stuff yeah. and it's like it just feels like the same information regurgitated over oh and over. yeah yeah you yeah, can tell like they all just read each other yes and wrote and then, it yeah. again mm -hmm. <laughs> i always feel like super journalism yeah. <laughs> i mean i am basically a detective yeah. after all and we are going to start our own private detective agency oh my gosh because we have so much time with all our free time yes well i have more now so we're good <laughs> great it's amazing okay so this starts in 1926 okay marvin clark was 75 years old okay which in the 20s that's a good life he's doing good yeah and he lived in mm -mm, tigard mm -hmm. amazing oregon oh i'm sure that's right tigard Tigger, Tiger, 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 became a city in 1961. Oh. But in 1926, it was just a small farming community. Mm. The Oregon Electric Railway arrived to Tigger, <laughs> Tigard, 
What is it, do you think? <laughs> Let's just say it different every time. Arrived in the town. It arrived there in 1910, <laughs> which spurred a lot of growth. Okay. And according to the 1910 U.S. Census, that also seems to be about the time that Mr. Clark moved there along with his wife, Mary. Okay. And he'd actually grown up in Marion County, Iowa, and mm-hmm. he lived in Nebraska, too. So he moved around a lot. He said, here I come, Morgan. Yeah. Marvin had also served as the town marshal of Linton, a district that would later become part of Portland, Oregon. Oh. And he'd been a marshal in Nebraska, too. Oh, wow. Do you know who else was a town marshal, Kara? Who? Wyatt Earp. (gasps) Do you know what the best movie ever made ever, Kara? Tell me, Megan. (laughs) Tombstone. Oh, wow. Does this have anything to do with Marvin Clark, Kara? You're Huckleberry. It does not. Just just your reminder to go watch that movie, everybody. Marvin and Mary had four kids. Including a daughter, Sydney McDougal, and a son, Grover C. Clark, which sounds like a president name. I know. In 1926, Grover was 31 and lived in Portland. Nope. Lived in Portland, <laughs> about 10 miles away from his parents. And Sydney, who was 40, had moved to Portland, too. She'd been living in Seattle. Oh, okay. The 1920 census shows that Grover was married and listed as the head of his household. And then Sydney was also listed as the head of her household. She lived in and managed the Hereford Hotel. Mm. But the census has people listed on it living at the same address with her as a boarder. Oh. Which makes me wonder what sort of hotel it was. It seems yeah. like a long term. Yeah. You know? They lived there long enough to list it as their right. home address right. in the census. It doesn't really matter. I just love it. I just like I looking know. at the old stuff. I so know. Okay. On October 30th, mm-hmm. 1926. Really close to home. Mm-hmm. mm-hmm. Marvin was going to downtown Portland to visit Sydney, his okay. daughter. He left his home at around 1 p.m. It was a 10-mile trip. Mm. He left either by stagecoach or by bus. The initial report said stagecoach. A later one said bus. Okay. So I'm not sure. Two days later, Mary, his wife, she calls her daughter. And uh-huh. she's like, hey, when's dad coming home? Because he's been there a while. Right. And Sydney was like, what are you talking about? Dad's not here. Oh. Sydney hadn't even known that Marvin was going to come visit her on oh. October 30th. Uh-oh. He never saw his daughter that day. Uh-oh. And no one from his family had heard from him at all. Oh, no. A newspaper article that I read from the time said that he had just returned to Tigard from visiting Sydney a few days before he vanished, which made it even stranger to her that he would have turned right back around yeah. and come see her again so soon. Yeah. And apparently, there are people who saw him at the terminal in downtown Portland. And if we believe that's him, mm-hmm. then we know that he at least made it to downtown Portland. Right. The thing is, I can't tell that those sightings have actually been verified. Okay. Nothing ever said, we know that's him. Well, yeah. It's just someone who matched his description. Right. So as soon as Sydney... probably a lot of people did. Right. He was in a black suit with a hat and... Yeah. Yeah. Older A mustache. Yeah. So as soon as Sydney and her mom realized that Marvin had been missing for two days now... Jesus. They began a frantic search to find him. Initially, they worried that perhaps some of the enemies he'd made from his work as a marshal had found him and harmed him. So they were like, what if they, like, went after him? Gunned him down. Sydney offered a $100 reward for information leading to his whereabouts. That's a lot of money. It'd be about $1,600 today. Yeah. The Oregonian headline read, Tigard Man, 75, (laughs) missing. Marvin A. Clark, last seen at Stage Depot. And in the article, Marvin was described as a well-known resident of Tigard who'd lived there for 15 years. Oh. So on November 9th, so what is that, like 10, 11 days later? Yeah. Newspaper reports from Bellingham, Washington, say that Mary, or possibly Grover, depending on the source, received a postcard from Marvin postmarked in Bellingham and that witnesses had seen Marvin at two hotels in the area on November 2nd and 3rd. Huh. The article said... The letter, the postcard they received, indicated that the aged man's mind is wondering as it was badly jumbled, despite the fact that Clark is highly educated, being a graduate of two universities. The same article also stated that as far as his family knows, Clark had very little money with him. And if that's the case, it makes me wonder how he paid for the hotel. Right, exactly. Um, Like, maybe it wasn't him. Yeah. Or he had money that his family didn't know about. Yes. Hmm. But also... The sightings in Bellingham plus the postcard being postmarked in Bellingham makes it seem like that was him, yeah. right? Yeah. Unless the postcard was some sort of prank or a misdirection mm. on the part of someone who knew mm-hmm. what happened to Marvin. Right. And then the power of suggestion made people, oh, yeah. I think I did see him. Oh, yeah. I, and I again, it's just like this hotel and then he was at this hotel. Right. Yeah. Just like you said about the yeah. depot thing. It's like a lot of people could fit that yeah. description. 
It seems like the family does believe that that postcard was from him, though. Like, I didn't see any talk about it being a hoax. Okay. Even though my very first thought would be... Right. We know it didn't sound like him. They said, yeah. if it's him, something's wrong with him. He's really disoriented. So maybe it's not him. Yeah. <laughs> but I don't know. Like, they were worried about his mental health if it was him. So... But he was of a sound mind when he left. Seems to be. I mean, he was 75, but like... Still... Right. If it wasn't from him, that mm-hmm. would indicate foul play or just some sick person who thought it'd be a funny thing to do to right. his family because humans right. are the worst. People are horrible. And we've horrible. seen that in some other cases yeah. we've done where people just, for well, whatever reason. Well, stuff, yeah. Yeah, like it's a cool prank yeah, it's for not whatever funny. reason. It's not funny. So Marvin was described as weighing about 175... Mm-hmm. 100, 175 pounds and standing about five foot seven. Okay. His right side was paralyzed, and he dragged his right foot when he walked. He had gray hair and a mustache, blue eyes, and he was last seen wearing a dark suit and a hat. So you described him perfectly without even knowing. Yeah. Police hoped that these characteristics would make him easy to identify, particularly because of the way that he walked, if someone happened to see him. So that postcard is the last bit of news that we have about Marvin's whereabouts. And who knows if that postcard is even real. Yeah. Now, in 1986... 60 years after Mm -hmm. Marvin Clark's family last saw him, some loggers found a nearly complete skeleton in the wooded area between Tigard and Portland. Huh. There was no ID, but they did find some other interesting things. They found an 1888 Liberty Head nickel, an 1881 silver dollar, an 1896 quarter, and a 1919 penny that appeared to be nearly uncirculated. So remember, he disappeared in 1926. Right. So they also found a Sears and Roebuck pocket watch, a mechanical lead pencil, and a fraternal order of eagles pocket knife, some wire rimmed glasses, and four tokens with the inscription D and P. They think those were tavern tokens. So they were given out at taverns back then, like during card games or sometimes just given as change. Mm -hmm. And then you could use those tokens at that tavern to buy food and drinks. Okay. They were a big thing from like 1890 to 1920. So instead of us giving you money, we're just going to give you these tokens. Here's but a you still, it's like a gift card. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So the dead man had also worn high top lace up shoes that were known as police loafers. And they'd been mm-hmm. popular back before the Depression. And lastly, there was a 38 revolver and a spent shell nearby. Hmm. So the date medical examiner determined that the skeleton was that of a man who was between 35 and 55 when he died, had stood around five foot eight inches tall, and that he had died by suicide. There was a bullet hole in his skull. Oh. So now at that time, again, we're 60 years later. Right. So Marvin's granddaughter, Dorothy Willoughby, came forward when she heard about this discovery of the skeleton. And she was like, I wonder if this could be my grandfather. So Marvin would have been 75 when he disappeared, which puts him outside that age yeah. range but i mean they're talking about a skeleton so i think it's a pretty right and also what if he sign. was pretty healthy yeah i p- mean yeah people were really really excited about this like okay. it made national headlines oh. maybe we found marvin clark okay but it was 1986 and they just didn't have the technology the, yeah. back then so dorothy passed away in 1991 mm-hmm. and it would take another 20 years oh my god after dorothy died for someone to take another look at Marvin's case. So it's 2011. Okay. Dr. Nikki Vance in the Oregon State Medical Examiner's Office reopened Marvin's file. Oh. And that 1986 John Doe, Mm -hmm. he's still in storage in 2011. Hmm. How? I guess they were dedicated. They just really wanted to know. Yeah. So they'd kept him for all that time. What if they kept his shoes on him? Or maybe not on him. Maybe they did. (laughs) I would imagine that. They were able to pull DNA what? at that time in 2011. Now, the problem is they mm-hmm. need DNA to compare that to. Oh, when she died. Yes. And they need maternal descendants oh. of Clark in order to make a positive ID. So at that point, it had been 85 years Oh my gosh. since Marvin had vanished. And finding descendants of Marvin's mother was a little tricky. Insane, yeah. She'd been married two more times after Marvin's dad, so... Different last names to track down and whatnot. But finally, in 2018, what investigators were able to find Marvin's great great granddaughter, Pamela Knowles. Oh my gosh. She and her son provided DNA samples that would determine whether or not the John Doe was indeed Marvin Clark. Oh. And it wasn't. So there's another John Doe. Right. I'm like, 
Well, then who is it? Where did this gentleman come from? So this was a huge surprise. Like at the time, the DNA thing was basically yeah. a formality. They mm-hmm. were like, it's the right time period. Mm-hmm. He's five foot mm-hmm. eight ish, seven ish. We're just going to the DNA test so we can close the door on it. Right. So nobody thought it yeah. wasn't him. Yeah. Everybody was like, figured it out. Right. So it's not him. And that's huh? not weird too. I was like, which also makes me wonder who was the John Doe they found in Exactly. Case. Nobody's looking where for him, come from? I guess. So the DNA samples that Pamela and her son provided, they're still on file in okay. NamUs, the National Missing and Identified mm-hmm. Persons System, in case future comparisons need to be made. Okay. That's so, helpful. Let's talk Good. possibilities. Yeah. What happened to him? Aliens. <laughs> Bigfoot. I mean, we are in the Pacific Northwest. He is now in the Secret Service, and he is not a real human. He's an alien, and he is still serving his country. Maybe you should call. Who do we call about this? Ghostbusters. <laughs> okay. Did Marvin just leave on his own accord and start a new life? No. Somewhere? It wouldn't have been impossible to do back then, and we know he moved around a so lot. So easy, but still. I mean... Okay, just to explore, I don't want to be Let's offensive. Do I don't want to be offensive to anybody. Okay. But what, if, you know, he was a marshal. What if he had, like, criminal connections? Oh, he's running it what if he's ground. What if he was dirty? What if he was? Or he made, like, criminal connections that helped him create a new identity. Oh, wow. <laughs> he's in Cuba. <laughs> <laughs> I was just very close to Cuba when I went down to Key West, and I had no idea that it was that close. Yeah, so close. We could get there quickly for pretty cheap. Not not Cuba, Key West. Right. No way. (laughs) My friend Melissa went and said it was amazing. When we went to Key West, me and my brother and my dad, did you guys know this? Did I talk about this? That we went to Key West together just like last week. We stayed at this hotel called Habana. No, Havana Cabana. That's what it is. Havana Cabana. (laughs) And it was like Cuban themed and had all these really classic cars out front. My dad loved it. And they were great. If you go to Key West, you guys, it has a shuttle that takes you downtown. It's a great hotel. The restaurants are so freaking good downtown. Yeah. Key West. Yeah. It was great. Like brunch is amazing. We had a great time. Yeah. All right. So. I've just said that maybe he could be a crook. Right. Uh-huh. <laughs> and I don't like saying stuff like that about it. If you look at pictures of him, he looks like the sweetest, sweetest old man old ever. And all the sources say that he was. They're all like, he and Mary were happily married. His kids never said anything bad about him. I think it's highly unlikely that he was like secretly crooked. But I mean, wasn't it, was it BTK that loved his family? I know. And then the, was it the smiley face? Happy face? Happy face. Happy face. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I mean, it would explain also how he might have had some extra cash that no one knew about. Mm -hmm. And maybe something happened that made him Mm -hmm. need to disappear. Mm -hmm. There's just no indication that he was unhappy. Or he was just doing undercover work for a secret spy agency and is now in Russia. I don't know. But also, he's 75. Why would you suddenly at 75 decide to start a brand new life? That's what he thought one day. (laughs) Just got on a train and started passing secret notes that weren't even anything. Weird postcards. <laughs> so I looked it up. The average life expectancy back then for a man was 55. And he's well beyond that. So like, yeah. why? What would be the point? Aliens. <laughs> they for sure would live longer. <laughs> if he ran off on his own, it makes more sense to me that he had some reason to disappear. Right. So for what it's worth, I saw zero talk about that. No one besides me is suggesting <laughs> that he was involved in any criminal activity. Allegedly, allegedly. I'm the opinion. only jerk yeah. saying these things. <laughs> And I don't really even mean it. I right. just feel like I should tell, say it. We need that out there. Okay. A further notch in the he disappeared on purpose category okay. would be how he hadn't told Sydney he was coming to see her. Right. But he told everybody else that he was going to. Right. And remember how she had said that he had just returned from visiting her two days, days ago. earlier? Yeah. So that's weird. Mm-hmm. Why was he going back so soon and not telling her? Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Did he meet somebody? Right. And uh-huh. then go back? To have to deal with it. Um, okay. Other possibilities. Yeah. Was Marvin the victim of foul play? It's possible on the train. Did he overhear something? Well, his family did worry about this because he'd been a marshal and he made some enemies. So right. it seems like a definite possibility. Mm-hmm. Maybe he was going to meet someone else. But Maybe. why keep it a secret? Right. Unless he's protecting the family. Yeah. But you would think that they would all know where... The family lived because he was well known. I mean, maybe he really was going to surprise Sydney, and that's why he didn't. Maybe, know. and he crossed paths with the wrong person. 
Otherwise, whether it was time. someone from his past or not, right? We don't have any witnesses that saw any kind of altercation. And of course, no body was ever found. Right. I always think it's so weird when no body Well, that's found. what I was going to say. If he did come across the wrong people at the wrong time, they hid the body well. Right. But it's also 1926. So it's not like they yeah. had a lot of the search technology. And isn't there a now. lot of like waters around there? I think so. I don't know. I mean, <laughs> there's an ocean around there. Water. <laughs> Grand. Woods. I there's lots of woods. I don't know. They also didn't have social media and all the ways to get a space yeah, out there for people to see. That's true. And they didn't start looking until two days after right, he disappeared. Right, so that 48 hours is long gone. Did he accidentally disappear? Like, did he in amnesia? Am- well, yeah. Well, and then they said that he was, like, partially paralyzed from sitting here thinking, did he have another? Maybe he had Something. a stroke and did he have another one? Or right. Did he- well, that postcard made his family worry that he'd somehow wound up in Bellingham and didn't remember how to get home, like mm-hmm. his mental health was failing. Right. Do you remember that episode I did? It was episode 40 about Lawrence Joseph Bader. Yes. The guy uh-huh. with the boat and all that. Mm-hmm. So I read a lot about amnesia when I did that one. Right. And I remember reading, it's really unusual for amnesia to last very long. Yeah. But if Marvin had some sort of medical emergency, I mean, he's 75. Yeah. He could have suffered from dementia. It seems unlikely that he already had dementia. Right. They probably wouldn't have let him just go off to right, see exactly. Sydney by himself yeah. if he, he wasn't. He was showing zero signs. But amnesia from dementia is often uncurable. Mm-hmm. And if it was him in Bellingham, then he at least remembered enough to write a postcard. That's true. Yeah. To and his family and send it to, send it to him. It too. Yeah. Right. So if he knew that much, then why couldn't he get home? Right. But even if we throw out amnesia. Hey, taxi, take me here. Right. <laughs> or stagecoach, yeah. whatever. So there are other medical possibilities. He could have had a stroke or right. a heart attack. Mm-hmm. Um, he was paralyzed on his right side, so he could have fallen and hit his head. Yeah, that's true. But the thing is, with any of those possibilities, they searched the hospitals. Yeah, and nothing came up. And the case was really publicized in the region right. at the time. And so they had you, a reward. Right. So if he had just been treated for a medical emergency, then like he probably would have yeah. been found. This would have to mean he had a medical emergency that resulted in death and also resulted in his body ending up somewhere that could, was never found. Yeah. Like he fell into a fault line. <laughs> right. Yeah. yeah. Like, where yeah. did he go? Oh, my God. Yes. So, one of the girls that works for Tyler, her, they were on vacation at the beach. Her dad decides to go on a walk Mm-mm. by himself. Mm-mm. Doesn't take his phone. Doesn't oh, take no. his wallet. I hate this already. Trips on a hill of rocks. Goes unconscious. Falls into the water and is under the water for at least six minutes. Unconscious. What? Somebody found him. He was in the ICU for forever. Pneumonia. Collapsed lung. Woke up out of, you know, an induced coma, signed himself out and was like, I'm good, guys. What? They said, I'm sorry. Do you know what you've been through? He was like, no. Wow. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, that was just like a couple of weeks ago. <sighs> totally forgot about it. Well, and but that just made me think, too. He could have had some sort of accident and died and someone found him but was like, oh, it's a body. Or like what, like they don't know enough or they think I yeah. might get blamed for this. Right. And so they just dispose of the body. Yeah. Or just leave him. I don't know. Mm-hmm. Did he die by suicide? Right. So when Dorothy, his granddaughter, came forward in 1986, she did say that she thought maybe he could have been depressed due to his mm-hmm. medical state. And I assume she meant the paralysis. And he could have been having PTSD from work stuff. Maybe. If he was. I mean, he's 75. health issues. Which is already super old for the time. Maybe right. he was just tired. Yeah. Still, it could be that the only reason she brought up suicide was because she knew the John Doe they found had died by suicide. Yeah. So she could have just been like, well, yeah, it could be him because of this, you know. Right. So that guy wasn't him. So if he died by suicide, there's still no body. It's not like Marvin could have died by suicide and then hit his own body. So maybe he just got lucky or maybe he intentionally figured out a way to do this that would mean his family never found him. Right. Maybe he didn't want him to go through that. Yeah. One of the articles mentioned he was a farmer and had a mortgage. Maybe he had money problems. I have no idea. I don't idea. know. Or maybe he's running from that secret criminal life that uh, he's talking about. Yeah. That is only, in my opinion, and <laughs> allegedly, allegedly <laughs> and most likely doesn't exist. So I really do think. She's going to write a book about it later, though. Harvey <laughs> Clark, criminal mastermind. I really think it's an outlandish possibility that he's, I don't, I don't believe that. Yeah. But I do think it's important to consider that people have secrets. Right. Like big ones. Oh, yeah. And you just never know. Like we talked about that. Until you stumble upon them when they've been dead for 10 years. Right. And you're like, what what were they doing? Remember we talked about Joan Rish in Mm -hmm. episode 33. I know I'm 
doing all these callbacks to old episodes, but it's just kind of like stuff that I think about sometimes. Like when someone completely vanishes like this, yes. I always come back to, there has to be some mm-hmm. big clue yeah. that we just don't know. Yeah. And, and it's probably right there. It's some secret that's like very well kept by the victim. Mm-hmm. And that doesn't always mean something criminal. Right. But just some secret life that this person's family doesn't know about, yeah. which could either put that person in danger mm-hmm. or possibly contribute to issues with mental health or yeah. depression. So the last thing that I thought of, maybe his body was found and just not identified. That's true. Like a newspaper article from when he disappeared said the family didn't think he had anything on him that would serve as identification. Oh. So somebody, if something happened to him and his body was found, there wouldn't have been ID on him. And if they found his body around the time he disappeared, I think the publicity alone would have yeah. led to him being identified. Right. But what if his remains were found much later? And like decomposed. So right. They didn't know what he looked like. Right. And oh. before there was like a well-connected database of missing yes. people. Yep. And if it was found in a rural area mm-hmm. or somewhere fairly far from where he disappeared. Yep. Maybe no one would have even known to just check if right. it was him. Yeah. Or maybe he was misidentified. Yep. Like that John Doe would have been. Yep. Because if they, oh, at man. some point, they could have just been like, that's him and mm-hmm. been done with it yeah. without following through on the DNA to yeah. find out. Or whatever morgue that his body ended up in. They were like, well, if he's been here long enough, Popper's grave it is. Yeah. I'm just throwing out like every idea right. of that. So today, Marvin Clark has the unfortunate distinction of being the subject of the oldest active missing person case in the United States. Oh, my gosh. He has been missing for 95 years, Jeez. 8 months, and 21 days. Oh, my gosh. Still an active case, though. They've left it open. Yeah. That's wild. Well, I mean, they were doing DNA comparisons well, yeah, in 2018. So. Wow. I know. I, I don't know that we'll ever find him. Right. But I do like that. His family's DNA is on file in case. <laughs> what if it pops up that like on, you know, that Netflix documentary where that guy is like everybody's dad <laughs> and he's like everybody's dad. <laughs> he's like traveling yeah. all throughout. It would be weird if like they find remains in, I don't know, Tennessee. Yeah. yeah. And it's him. Oh, Because then that would be a whole other mystery. It'd be yeah. like, okay, we found him, but why is he why? here? Why did he leave? Yeah. Oh, so, yeah, that's it. Oldest missing person case in the United States. That's wild. I thought so, too. Man. Just randomly stumbled upon that Googling one day. I love it. Okay. That's it, you guys. Well, guys. Thank you for listening. We love you guys just so much. Yep. Yeah. Um, if you are in the Facebook group, mm-hmm. you should totally put up your theory about what yeah, you think. Yeah, please do. Do you think he's a criminal mastermind? He's not. Or is he he's your not. people? <laughs> Your people. <laughs> okay, we love you so much. Goodbye. Goodbye. <laughs>